So here, let's take this example of birth weight to better understand normal distribution uh, and the, the z-score and probabilities in the normal distribution. So birth weight follows a normal distribution. We know this because birth weights of babies, we're talking about babies being born, um, we have been studied for a long time. And once we start accumulating lots of babies and measuring their births, we can see that the actual distribution approximates the normal distribution. And here, let's take a look. Let me uh, let's direct the, uh, our attention to the graph here of this actual sample of birth weights measured. Uh, the sample used 3,226 babies. So obviously, these are not all the babies that have ever been born on Earth. It's a sample, um, and you can see the sample approximates a normal distribution. So we can use properties of the normal distribution to make inference about this um, about the sample and this this domain. Notice that we also have a frequency distribution. This is a histogram and looks very much like the probability distribution function, but it's not because the x axes are in the actual kilograms measured of uh, of the babies. And on the y-axis, we actually have the frequency as observed in the sample. So the yellow bars are the actual sample. So here we have 3.5. Notice how the x-axis, you know, is standardized equal distance. So 2, 2.5, 3, 3.54. But the mean is actually over here. The mean's over here. It's 3.39. And if we check, this actually happens to be the category with the highest, the biggest rectangle. So the frequency is about this is three, two, 250, 3, 350, 360 or something babies with uh, on the mean. And then if, so that means about 200 babies are over here. 200 babies have a little bit less than three uh, kilograms. And, but on the sample, only a small fre frequency, less than 50 babies actually weigh about 2.2 uh, 2 or 2.3 kilograms. Okay, so this is how we read this graph. And now I laid this graph on top of the standardized uh, z-score uh, normal distribution. So we can see the, how the values are away from the mean. Now, we already know that um, generally from the normal distribution, 68% of babies are within one standard deviation of the mean. That is 68% of birth weights uh, of babies or in babies as well are within one standard deviation of the mean. And that means they weigh between 2.84 and 3.94. How do I get these numbers? Well, a mean is 3.39 kilograms. So minus one standard deviation, 3.39 minus 0.55, we get 2.84. And 3.39 plus 0.55, we get 3.94. And if we like plot it over here, we can see that it falls exact, kind of exactly because I just pretty much drew on top. So this is one standard deviation. It kind of matches 3.94. And the other one is 2.84. So it should be, well, I'm just, if we just draw up from here, it should be around here, 2.84. And that looks pretty much similar, right? It's correct. It's not going to be precise. Uh, so, uh, so this is information about the general standard deviation uh, I'm sorry, the general a normal distribution, as we saw here, 68% of the data is within one standard deviation. And we can assume because this is a very large sample and it approximates a normal distribution, if we were to calculate in the sample as well, I can guarantee you that 60%, 68% of babies, that's actually babies, 68% of the instances, which of the individuals in this case, of individual babies, have birth weight that is between 2.84 and 3.9 kilograms, okay? And then we can follow along. 95% of babies are within two standard deviations of the mean. How do I know? Well, it says right here, if we have a normal distribution, 95% of the data, the instances, the individuals are within two standard deviations of the mean. So 95% of babies are going to weigh 2.29 and 4.49. And what did I do? Well, I just summed two standard deviations, which is if one is 0.55, then two is 1.1, 1 .1. 3 0.39 plus 1 1.1, 4.49, 3.39 minus 1.1, 1 .1, 2.29, 2 
and we can see here that it actually does match this graph pretty closely to standard deviations right here. The value here is about 2.29 and the value here for two standard deviations is about 4.5. And once again, not exactly precise, but um, I think it does the job. So let's think about this. A question, how likely is it that a baby born tomorrow will weigh over 4.49 kilograms? I'll pause the video now, think about it, and I will go on and give the answer. So we can see that 95% of the instances, as we said, right, 95% of the instances are within two standard deviations. Right here, 95% of the instances are within two standard deviations. And that means that 95% of babies are going to weigh between 2.29 and 4.49. So the chance that a baby will be away for over, over 4.49 is, you can say, 5% or less, right? 5% or less, because 95% of babies are within two standard deviations. So if you're away, you have a 5% or less chance. And that is correct. However, you can be even more precise here because notice that we're asking um, over 4.49 kilograms, not over 4.49 kilograms or less than 2.29. So we're not even concerned with the um, less than the, the lower second, the, uh, the lowest second standard deviation, right? So we can actually see here that it already gives us the cumulative percentage of instances, 97.7%. And we can also know just, we can just divide the 5% by two as well. So five divided by two equals 2.5. So um, the chance there's 2.5% here of the babies and 2.5% here. So the chance of a baby born tomorrow will weigh over 4.49, just greater here in this area here. This area here, the chance that a baby will be born with this weight is actually only 2.5% or less. 2.5% uh, chance at the most. And you can see here 97.7, it's not identical, that's 2.3, but 2.3, 2.5 um, and so on. So I hope this clarifies some of these examples for you. And um, next, we're gonna go complete our hypothesis testing example.